Hey folks, David Molnar here, your podcast co-host, your photography mentor podcast. It's always a funny, every, every, the, every week. The, your, every the, time. your, we'll the, your, the, your photography. Yeah. By we episode just 50, we'll have it. Yeah. This is episode 25, I think, right? Does that sound about right? 25. That's right. The one, the only, the ginger shot, one of the, one of these sides, Rich Coleman here. Hello. Rich. Hello. Yeah. How are Did you, I, David? I, I'm great. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I'm kind of soaked right now. Like there's, um, you know, I, one time I, should, I just needed to do a topless uh, podcast episode one of these days. Uh, yeah, that not, would get the ratings up. Yes, it would. We'd get three as people well as to watch. It'd be amazing instead of just two. Uh, <laughs> okay, moving past that one. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, gosh. You're always um, appropriate. Favorite. <laughs> the always, the always extremely appropriate, never innuendo co-host. I'm just trying time. to get us explicit, man. I, it's like a rated R movie is just better sometimes than a PG-13 movie. Oh, so I'm just gosh. getting us there. Oh, man. You are. You're getting us up. Um, hey, what's what's big three for you? We've got a really exciting day today, by the way. I'm really excited about it. Big I'll three, go real first. Quick, go so you can yeah. go second, and then okay. I'll go third. Well, mine could be like I just rode in the rain. I got caught in the storm. Nobody cares. Um, okay. Here's the big three. <laughs> the first one. Um, I've had more weddings. So last Monday, I've had more weddings in the last 10 days than I had the last six, seven months because of COVID and yeah. crazy scheduling. Yeah. Uh, but I am caught up on editing. I spent this weekend hanging out with my family, running to my office, culling and editing. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a wedding today. I've got a wedding in Raleigh on Thursday. And I've got a wedding back here on Friday. Holy. And they're all over eight hours. But I am caught up on editing, so I don't feel like death. There's nothing worse feeling wise than just being behind on edits. I hate Ooh. that feeling. Yeah, I've never never had that. So that's my before. that's my big uh, that's that's my big one. Uh, I'm drinking out of my you know favorite favorite Soundside pottery cup again, David. Shameless mm. plug. There you go. There you go. Um, uh, for me, I mean, I just I, I was trying to come over here. I stopped at a coffee shop that's in between my house, and it just literally was like a freaking hurricane the winds were 60 or 70 mile per hour and i'm like crap i gotta i still gotta ride my bike like three more miles to get to my office um but i just rode in like a little like the big storm passed some light rain and we're good but um but the the biggest thing the most exciting thing is that we have an amazing uh guest well, that's my number three. Oh, sorry well i'm yeah, excited gosh, about that. Jerk face. well, well so yeah. i've actually I've I've actually met this man before, but he doesn't remember. It's okay. I'm I have that experience all the time with people. Yeah, mine's mostly not with women, me. but it's cool. That's fine. <laughs> it's no, yeah. I'm happily married. I've been yeah. married for 11 years. I've been happily married for like four of those years. Yeah. So I met this guy. We were doing a shoot at Westlight for Mercy Me, and uh -huh. you were like, "Hey, come back here to this, you know, little alley behind this like farm mall thing." <laughs> the factory, whatever they call that. Uh, I'm yeah. not from Nashville. I, I, I apologize. Nashville's great. Best coffee in the world. Even better than France. Um, and me and my buddy, Ryan Moser, Ryan and Rachel Photography, great, amazing, world-class photographer. We go to this door and like, boom, like my photography hero pops out of the window. And I immediately have that. I need to take a selfie with this guy. But I restrained it. I held it in and you I played swallowed it. Cool. it. You played it cool. Like. Yeah, and I was trying really hard because, like, honestly, you're there and you're always, like, you're so Nashville. Like, I get coffee and Taylor Swift's there and it's no big deal. But this was a huge deal for me. And even though I only met him for, like, three minutes, he inspired me. He mm. was kind to me. And I'll never forget that. And without further ado, our guest today let's, is the amazing Jeremy Coward. Let's, let's talk about some of his accolades, David. Like, who is Jeremy I, freaking I, Coward? I, I, put him up on, I put him up on the screen here. Hey, Jeremy, how's He's it going, so man? He's <laughs> we, we had Jeremy listening to that in the background. I don't know if you remember that, Jeremy, but we were, uh, I mean, this was, you know, one, one of those, like five I didn't years tell, ago? I didn't, so Rich was, Rich was very involved with Help Portrait on the Outer Banks of North Carolina where we both grew up and Rich still lives. And so he was like following along on, on um, you know, following one of your, you know, millions of social media followers literally uh stalker and, yeah super stalker um no but i was like hey let's just walk over here it was like in between photo shoot hour or something like that and like lunch break or something and we knocked on your door and you just like popped out and like you know gave you a hug and you introduced either i kept it way cooler right. than most did, in all fairness right. i was like chill i was like i gotta be cool i gotta yeah. be cool <laughs> <laughs> uh, jeremy, amazing. let me turn my phone off. <laughs> jeremy how you doing today 
I'm doing great. I'm uh, glad to be here with y'all. I feel like I feel like I'm in 38 right now. I'm just talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's just tan skin. He's so freaking tan. Look at him. Yeah. I know. Man. I yeah. Know. I just try to get some vitamin D. I hear. I heard it's. I heard it's good for you. Um, Jeremy, yeah. that's a cool piece of artwork behind your head. What, what's this? Is something I, you did? I painted that in college for my wife. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, two one-winged angels. They can only fly together. Ooh, that's deep. Ooh. <laughs> that's deep. So, so I deep. Um, I love it. So I'm in my very luxurious bedroom today, said with heavy sarcasm. Um, <laughs> that's a dream of mine. Dream come true. And managing, <laughs> managing four uh, children doing remote learning at home. Mm. So I... I'm basically on a tech support break right now for managing <laughs> our children's computers. <laughs> help, Daddy, help me get on the Zoom call type thing. Yes, yes. Well, your Wi-Fi connection still seems still seems pretty good. So, um, yeah. hey, for those of you guys who don't know, I, I need to brag about this guy over here. I don't know which side he's on. Whatever, the, Jeremy Coward. Um, He's oh, one of me. my, he, he's, he's, a, he's a good friend of mine, dear friend. We've known each other for at least two or three months. I'm just kidding. Probably like 14, 13, 14 years, something like that. Um, and uh, I used to, when I, whenever I talk about like uh, assisting other photographers, um, Jeremy was one of the main photographers that I assisted in those early days. I mean, I was setting up his lights. Uh, I was carrying sandbags. I occasionally would lend a knee for him to lean back on if he was like in a in a in a weird position, like trying to get a, a low angle or something, which I think probably freaked you out a little teeny bit. Uh, it, yeah, I think it was a Brandon Hay shoe. We were on that location over in Nashville, and we were like standing on rocks, and you were like literally ready to catch me. With in <laughs> like underneath your butt, like this. Or yeah, <laughs> in hindsight, you were actually way ahead of your time because I now have a neurological disease which i had at the time which does affect my balance and so maybe, maybe you knew something that i didn't know that i actually could fall at any given moment mm. awesome. i don't well i, I didn't between pick, the lines i didn't i didn't pick that up but um but those are really cool shots brandon heath doing this like with the tower behind them it was yeah, yeah. Shot, i think yeah. um well here real, real quick for those of you guys who don't know who jeremy coward is um, I'm going to read like a quick little part of his bio. If you're new and you don't know who Jeremy is, he's been shooting portraits for over a decade, well over a decade. His portrait list includes Taylor Swift, Sting, Heidi Klum, Kelly Clarkson, Clarkson, Tyler Perry, Emma Stone, Britney Spears, Gwyneth Paltrow, Luke Bryan. We have uh, our, um, our operations manager, Kristen, is a huge Luke Bryan fan. Uh, the Kardashians, Ooh. Garth Brooks, they Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> yeah, you have photographed me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Ryan Seacrest, Carrie Underwood, Need to Breathe, Switchfoot, One Republic, and many, many more. And clients like ABC, Fox, Discovery Channel, ESPN, People Magazine. I'm not going to read all of them because it would take too long. New York Times, USA Today, etc. And one of the interesting things about you is in, in the year, I think it was 20, 2014, um, Huffington Post and Forbes called you the most influential photographer on the Internet. You have had... have cringe now but there's a story there go ahead yeah yeah well maybe you have to tell us that story um but yeah you've had hundreds you have hundreds of thousands of followers online i think with uh google plus you had like millions of followers on google plus which i don't think that's actually a thing anymore but but you had millions of followers on there uh and so so yeah um jerry's an amazing photographer big inspiration of mine i literally would you know, carry his sandbags, and I just learned so much from you. And so I'm just so honored. So thanks for thanks for joining us today on this podcast. We've got some fun things to talk about. What, what's what's the story about the most influential photographer thing? Oh, just well, it was just funny because I, I I have since removed that from my bio because it's now you know six years old. Sure. But I guess I guess in that moment, you know, there was a there was a firm that had done over thirty of these most influential uh, research, whatever. And um, they looked at not which which was our biggest on, but across all when you average Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram. At the time, apparently I came up as number one. Um, but ever since then, uh, I mean, I'm not even in the top, you know, a thousand most influential photographers. There are so many people out there that are just 
killing it. And so I, I just cringe now because I'm like, I'm so not influential <laughs> <laughs> compared, compared to some of the really big photographers out there. But, you know, it's been one of those things that has certainly helped with uh, publicity. And when I'm when I get up to speak on a stage somewhere and they mention that, you know, it's just a good uh, credential. But now it feels quite outdated. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. well. It'll never be outdated in my heart, Jeremy. It'll, it'll, never, it'll never, it'll never, never be. Thank um, you. Hey, well, a couple things. So Jeremy has written a book. I'm Possible is the name of the book, correct? Mm-hmm. I, might even, I, don't know, I have it at my house. I don't have it here at the office. Um, and you also do these amazing creative portrait sessions and stuff like that. And so what we want to do is we want to give away, I'm going to buy a portrait session from you. Hopefully that's okay. And then we're going to give it away to one of the students. And are you still doing the virtual ones or are you only doing in studio or... No, I'm doing all of the above. Still doing okay. virtual, Sweet. still doing in studio. Okay. So if uh, if someone's within earshot of Nashville, they could potentially do it in the studio, and if they're not, then they could potentially do it virtual. So yeah. and then the other thing. So I'm I'm also going to pick a second winner at the end of this podcast, and we're going to give uh, your book away to one of them. Is that okay? And I'm, I'm yep. I'll buy that stuff from. That's amazing. People. Yeah, so all you guys have to do if y'all want to get access, if you want to be eligible to win a free photo session from one of my photography heroes and early mentors, still mentor, um, uh, Jeremy Cowart, then click that share button. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, click the share button. And um, and all you have to do is just click the share button and we'll, we'll grab uh, a couple of winners from those people who share this. One will win a book and one will win a free photo session. Um, Boom. It could cost, stuff. you know, I'll, I'll pay for it, but it'll be free to you. Yeah. So that's my that favorite thing to do in the David Monar world is spend your money. And actually, <laughs> what you're winning is your photography mentor's mentor's book. So <laughs> there's clout true. in that too. Your, the, yes. your photography mentor's mentor. This is right. <laughs> you're, 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 your photographer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so many different things. Jeremy, um, today we want to talk about. So last week we started on this, I want to say, journey of talking about. Enneagram, mm-hmm. and um, and I thought it would be really fun to bring you on. We have I don't think we've personally talked about Enneagram too much, but I'm cur- really curious to your thoughts and your insight on it. Um, we started talking about the Enneagram numbers last week. We talked predominantly about the number seven. We have not gone into in depth on all the other numbers, but today I thought it'd be fun to talk about um, your Enneagram number. So a couple questions for you. Number one. What's your Enneagram number? I am a four with a four wing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. That's awesome. No, I think I'm a four wing three, but I mostly just feel like a four. <laughs> mm. Mm. I feel you. I feel you. Um, and so what? what is the I'm four? Y'all, by the way. Oh, I, I am a seven wing eight. Nice. Seven wing eight. And then Rich? Same. I'm the same. We're the same person, but I'm a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. You are a seven wing eight. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been interesting learning about Enneagram stuff. W- what's your wife's number? She's a nine. She's nine. a nine. The peacemaker, right? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's got to be, that's gotta be super in- interesting. So where did you learn about the Enneagram and like, when did you find out that you're a four? Um, it's just been one of those things that have been so prominent in Nashville for several years. In fact, I saw a tweet recently that really made me laugh. They said, you know you're in Nashville when you land at the airport, and within five minutes you hear the word Enneagram. <laughs> 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 yeah, that about sums it up. Um, and honestly, I was uh, one of those who mocked it for quite a, quite a long time. I was just like, man, if I hear any more talk about the Enneagram, you know. But then I uh, I even met with a girl who, like, professionally tests people for it. And uh, I was still skeptical because she, like, equally tested me as a four, seven, and a nine. Uh, and so that only hurt my beliefs in it. I was like, okay. You know, mm. anyway, and then over time, I don't know, I just started like hearing more and more about it. I read a, I read a good bit about it. Um, talked to uh, Ian Crone's a good friend of mine who wrote, um, gosh, what's the name of his? The Road Best Back Son- to You. The Road Back to You, which is still years later, like in the top 100 of Amazon books. Like, mm. it's crazy. Um, 
so we become good friends and he's talked to me a lot about it um but um i don't know yeah and then i launched i had an idea to launch the this thing called Enneagraph, which was photographing people based on their Enneagram, and that actually helped me believe in it more and subscribe to it more. And now I'm definitely a full believer, like I am. Recently brought on three interns, and I hired them solely based on their Enneagram numbers. Mm, really? Because <laughs> I, I knew I did not want another four in my studio, or uh. didn't. <laughs> and then on eight, no offense, uh, I was looking for uh, ones and twos, maybe nines. Yeah. Okay. All right. Everybody needs a one in their life. This yep. is true. This is true. Uh, ones and twos, and twos are the helpers. One is the perfectionist. Oh, mm. that's interesting. You hired them based off of their Enneagram number. That's yep. that's that's so. And how did that work out? Was that a good Was that a good thing? It's been amazing. Yeah, they've been with me for gosh, two and a half months, and uh, they nailed it. I mean, they're both definitely what they what they said they were. And Because, uh, you know, when you get another four, when you get another four together, like, I'm like, I don't need to clone myself. I don't need another weird, artsy-fartsy, forgetful, um, you know, person around. I need somebody who's, it's in their blood to just help, because I need a lot of help, you know. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's been great. So the one is the perfectionist, and a lot of times they're extremely organized and like they they want to cross all the T's, dot all the I's. I'm like, what, what's that expression? Lowercase yeah, they, so, they're, so they're doing that stuff. And the two, my wife is a two. She it's the helper, right? And that's someone who their um, you know, their motivation is to feel needed, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 to help, like to to help yeah. and to feel like they're needed. They get purpose in helping other people, so I can see how that be, those would be great else. traits to to have uh, people on your team. And the nine is the peacemaker, um, and so the, obviously you wouldn't be ruffling, you know, like ruffling feathers or anything like that. There, um, let's talk about four for a second. Uh, well, well, I want to talk about four. I want to go deep into that for a second and, and hear a little bit more about your perspective. What is the four, by the way? The individualist. The individualist, a and AKA, heard, the, AKA the romantic, which I'm not really sure what that means, but well, that, the individualist really connects. Yeah, really connects. Can I show? Uh, so you did you did in the Enneagraph dot co uh, mm -hmm. project, and it's not something you're focused on at the moment, but I thought it was really cool. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up on the screen for a second. Can we talk? Can we talk about that for a little teeny bit? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up on the screen. You won't be able to see it. Um, but I've got this up here. Um, and so um, it's on the top and it's showing different things. And then so right now I'm looking at the one, the perfectionist, and it's showing these like clean, beautiful portraits. Um, and then each of these, each of these different ones, there's two, the helper, and it's showing these warm, inviting. I, I love it. Like I, I love how the color and it's the light. so true. Yeah. Yeah. The color and the light <clears throat> is like, is, is making, um, you know, is is basically just, yeah, reflecting so much. Number three is the achiever. Um, you know, like trying to trying to get that stuff done. You know, like think of that yeah. business person or that lawyer or something like that. It's always trying to achieve in the suits. You know, Harvey. Mm -hmm. uh, did you watch the the TV show Suits? Anyone? No a one. A little bit. Yeah, a okay. little bit. Forget what his name. Harvey. Uh, whatever. The individualist. Oh, the number four. We got this one. Super artsy. And these are like these are the types of portraits that feel like you try to shoot the most in your studio too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, of course. Huh. Yeah. Which can I? I want to. I want to speak on that for a second too, because Jeremy, to me, as a photographer's photographer, like Jeremy's an artist to me. Mm. Like when I think of an artist photographer, he's always at the top of the list because this is, mm. he's an excellent in post, but to watch him, through Instagram stories, do this stuff in camera is super fun. Mm. Like shooting through a projector on a back wall with paint on it and i mean it's just it's the craziest like most creative thing in it like just as a creative person that scratches that creative itch with photography it's like so cool to watch kind of you like deconstruct these things on the back end it's super fun to watch well thanks absolutely yeah. it's been a blast <clears throat> yep and then we have um you know i i echo that for sure there we have the investigator. I like how everything's black and white. I thought that was interesting. I was like, that's a great color choice on the investigator, you know, very observant. 
and inquisitive, Docu always doing. Sorry, what was that? The documentarian, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then we got six, the loyalist. <clears throat> it's kind of like this this warm, faithful, and dependable. Love that. The enthusiast, number seven. There's there's me and Rich right there. <laughs> Very colorful, very bright, very happy, very smiley, lots of energy. Uh, sevens don't want to focus on negative emotions. They want to bypass that stuff. And so that's why this, this is. I make like all those faces. It's pretty funny. Like any picture I'm thinking of myself, I'm making a face. Yeah. Like I rarely take a normal photo. Yeah. yeah. And then we got the challenger <clears throat> and uh, strong and confident, assertive and powerful and demeanor. Um, and all these challenges are like, they remind me of like, uh, like actors that should be in the movie Grease or something. <laughs> they got their leather coats and all that stuff. So oh, love that. Totally. And then the number nine, the peacemaker. Um, so that's cool. Soft, bright, and delightful. Always seeking to you know make peace and be soothing and all that stuff. So man, I love this project. It's such a it's such a cool project. I know you're doing this a little while back, and it's not it's not the focus. But how did you uh, how how did you come up with this this idea and like. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Man, ideas are such a weird thing. Um, <laughs> I was, I mean, you're going to laugh when I explain it because it doesn't make sense. I was looking at Instagram and I was just scrolling and I saw my friend Judson's post and it was just a post of a pillow he had bought. The pillow was shaped like a hand like this <laughs> that you sit on and the pillow's grabbing your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I just started thinking about uniqueness, like how unique that was, how ma how unique it made the house, and something about like individuality, and I started thinking about the Enneagram, and I don't know, man, something about like that moment, I was like, Enneagram, lighting, and then the light was really beautiful in that photo, and I was like, I should photograph people based on their Enneagram. <laughs> like, that's literally how the idea hit me, was based on a hand butt-grabbing pillow. So a pillow, uh, a pillow that's soft and grabs your butt. You're like, I should make enneagraph.co and shoot portraits of people. I should make a world class idea out of something that grabs your butt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, like ideas are such a weird thing. You never know when they're coming or what's gonna start them. But yeah, that's literally how the idea came to me. <laughs> Man, well, one of the one of the things that I've been fascinating from just observing you and you know being you know your your assistant you know, 14 years ago. Um, and, and then, you know, just friends and like having kids that played around and going to church together and stuff. Um, was that you're, <clears throat> you just, you're an ideas person. I think that's the way you described yourself to, you know, to me 10 years ago, you, cause you, you're, you're so much more than just, uh, than just a photographer. You have, <clears throat> you're always, you're, I, it feels to me like you're always seeking. I don't know if you're seeking it, but you, you just always have this inspiration uh, and this new idea for a way to change the world. And a lot of times that's been amazing nonprofits like Help Portrait or this, uh, this amazing hotel that is in the process of, you know, Jeremy's not only just a photographer. I mean, not only just an amazing photographer who shoots incredibly inspiring portraits, but he's also the founder of the Purpose Hotel, which you know, it's been in process for a little while. I guess it's hard to build a really expensive hotel, but, um, <laughs> but you're, you're an ideas guy. Like that's you. And, and, um, and where do you think that, you know, as it pertains to the four, which is the individualist on the Enneagram, um, where do you think that, you know, do you think that's because you're a four that you're always having these creative ideas? Um, I don't know. I mean, the four is really just a framework to, describe you know people like me um i think ideas are they're a lot like working out like you have to you have to really um do the bad ideas you have to do just exploring so many people as soon as they have an idea they shut it down because they say i'm too young or i'm too old i'm broke nobody cares i don't have the resources i don't know how to start it so dreams just live in people's heads and they never go for it. Um, but the thing is, once we go for it, even if it's a lame, dumb idea, like we learn so much by doing that dumb idea. And so I just keep doing them and my muscles get stronger each time I do them. I keep working out and getting better. And so 
Um, now I, I literally, I mean, I'm having ideas all the time, and that's not to say I'm a creative genius. It's to say I'm dumb enough to go for it and and carefree enough to to not care if it fails. Hmm. You know, to not care if you know everybody sees that it didn't work out. You know, because I've had a lot of those ideas that did not work whatsoever. Um, but they're like albums, you know, like a lot of musicians are going to have a lot of songs that suck and some, uh, some songs that are amazing. And that's kind of the way I look at ideas. Like I just got to keep, keep writing, keep cranking. Uh, Jeff Goins posted a quote the other day that I'm still baffled by in its simplicity and its accuracy. And all it said was artists are always beginning. And, uh, I was like, my goodness, I've never heard a quote better describe me. And don't get me wrong, there is just as much bad to that as there is good. Yeah. Because when you're, when you're always beginning, that means you don't love commitment. You don't love sticking with it. You just always want to re- be starting over. And uh, there's a lot of downside to that. But either way, it's true. Like, I'm always uh, beginning something. I, I can I can echo that because it does always feel like you're you're beginning something and um, and a lot of your ideas do work or it, it seems to the external public they they hear about the ideas that that do work you know um, you know whether it's whether it's the you know the way that you would Photoshop like the the website that you built 15 years ago the black one where like the images would slide left and right I still yeah. remember that website is like my, one of my favorite photography websites of all time um, and you know Help Portrait which is shot I don't even know how many portraits in 70 countries around the world and given away hundreds and hundreds of thousands maybe millions of portraits away to people the Purpose Hotel which is happening you know. And, um, you know, the Enneagraph and then doing these different portrait shoots and and um, and even this new society that you're about to launch, like you, um, your ideas, uh, I feel like they just keep on getting better, you know, over time. But I love and I love how you said it's like working out. You have to like flex those creative muscles and fail a lot, you know. Mm. So so a question I have for you is when you're flexing these creative muscles, Um, how do you, how do you know, do you just pursue every idea or like, because there's gotta be some risk to your family, you know, like to you, cause you're a dad of Mm -hmm. four kids. Hopefully I can say that. Um, and you know, and, and you're a family man and from, from, uh, you know, from me observing you over the years, like you're a great dad and you care deeply. Um, and like how do you balance the you know the risk for certain big ideas because you can't just pursue everything you know versus like when it's the right time to pursue it yeah i mean there is a little bit of a process uh the first thing i do is document them because a lot of times ideas we just forget them um at least i do and so i write it down immediately Hmm. and then if i feel like it's strong i will share it with my wife who Nine and a half times out of ten doesn't care or doesn't like them. (laughs) (laughs) But I also realize, like, she's not in our industry. So I also have to realize she's not going to get most of them because, Mm -hmm. you know, she she doesn't really care about the photo industry or the creative industry. She's a very caring person, but um, she's in real estate. She's a whole different world. So, Mm -hmm. um Anyway, so then I'll I'll run it by uh, you know guys that I trust who will be really honest with me, and then I wait because a lot of times ideas seem genius at first, but then a week later you're like, well, you start to poke holes in it, and two weeks later you're like, yeah, that idea sucks, you know. Mm. So I'll wait and give it some time. Or other times the idea is so clear, um, and the resources make so much sense that you run with it immediately and. Uh, like I did a project around Black Lives Matter uh, in April that I knew right away I had to go with. And uh, mm-hmm. that was one of the most meaningful things we've ever done. Um, the Gallenberg Wildfire Project, you know, I had all those resources. Uh, actually, I didn't have them ready, but I knew I was supposed to do it, so I figured it out. Um, mm-hmm. It just depends on the project, but I just, it's a gut instinct. And, and do I have the time? And then there's some ideas that... Um, 
I mean, I've waited for years to pursue it. I still haven't pursued them. I've gosh, an idea for uh, a family global movement that I just don't have the resources to put out there. And I, hmm. I think the hotel could help push that. It's like I have market future marketing ideas for the purpose of hotel that are these Jeremy ideas that just can't live in my world, but they could live under the hotel umbrella. So hmm. yeah, there are a lot of things that I continue to shelve, even though I think they could greatly benefit society. Um, so yeah, it's a weird ideas are just a weird, such a weird thing. Yeah. Well, that, that's well, I, comm- I commend you on getting so many of them done. Like when you, like again, like I have ideas, and then I think they're stupid, but none of them have teeth. I feel like a lot of your ideas will have teeth and grow into something, which is, you know, as somebody who inspires other people, it's great. I mean, it's so fun to, you know, you're using your gifts to give back. You're not just using your gifts for a salary. You're using your gifts to you know, make an impact. Well, thank you. I mean, some of them very much are strictly to make money, you know, like yeah. <laughs> I do have to make a living. And during these times, I mean, I, I, me, like most creatives, you know, there was about a week in March where I deleted my entire calendar for the year. You know, uh, not many people know this, but I actually mainly make my living through speaking. I speak all over the country. Uh, last year, that was the biggest way I made a living was, was uh, uh, doing speaking gigs. And so to spend about a four-day span deleting all photo mm. shoots, all speaking gigs, I was like, all right, all right. And for about a week, I was in that funk, you know, in that depression. And then I had the idea to invent a new way of doing virtual portraits. And so um, I launched that. And in six weeks, I literally did 1,200 photo shoots. Um, oh, my gosh. Woo! Like, photo shoots, 1,200. Uh, 39 countries, all 50 American states. I mean, it was, it had to be some kind of like photography industry record for photo shoots. Uh huh. Yeah. Because I would do yeah. the, the first three shoots I did was 100 shoots at a time. Um, and so I'd use a software called Crowdcast. So I'd be like looking at somebody in Australia and we'd do a two minute photo shoot. And then as soon as they're done, I'm in Austin, Texas. Then I'm back to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Then I'm back to Franklin, Tennessee. Then I'm back to New York City. Then I'm back to... I mean, it was just total chaos. Um, But the most (laughs) beautiful thing ever, because everybody is watching everybody else's photo shoot, and um, gosh, it was bananas. Um, But like I did that to make money, you know, that Mm. that had to be... I was like, how do I survive? So I launch that and uh and then i got burned out and then i was sick of it <laughs> <laughs> always beginning always beginning how do you how do you do the virtual photo shoot um linda is asking this question yeah i'm, I'm curious like what are the you said you do it with crowdcast but I don't, I don't really understand like can you explain that to us yes it is uh quite complicated um started talking to my friend derek derek webb who does he's been doing live virtual concerts for years and so He's got a lot of experience, um, but it was a combination of the Eventbrite mixed with Crowdcast, where I basically project people onto a painted backdrop, like a canvas. Mm-hmm. Then I double project with a second projector. I was projecting my iPad, so I could create texture and art live over the photo that I was then photographing with my camera. So. Essentially, I photographed a blank canvas 1,200 times in my studio on the white wall, (laughs) but projected onto that canvas was 1,200 families all over the world. Um, So yeah, then it was then it was broadcast live on social media, and um, so it almost kind of marketed it itself because you could watch me live and sign up on that link, and um, yeah, it was crazy. (laughs) So they so they were. They're essentially on like a Zoom call, but it's Crowdcast, right? Yeah. And then, exactly. so they're just web, like, what? what's their background? Just whatever? Uh, I would coach them when they sign up. They would get all the coaching, like, bling backdrop, white wall, dark wall, you know, good, preferably natural lighting. Um, right. And some people's photos look terrible, you know. Yeah. Some people, but then there were, like, there were those few that were just, like, extraordinary magic. You know, it was mm-hmm. like, holy cow, this is truly, like you know, groundbreaking 
uh, co- uh, collaboration that we're doing here. It was crazy. Yeah. And so where would be the best place for people to find out about this, this like your virtual portraits? Um, that's a good question. I, forget. I, forget <laughs> I think it's uh, jeremycoward.eventbrite.com. Uh, okay. I will post that's what I was looking for, too. We'll, we'll, we'll post a link to it in just a second. Um, you guys can follow Jeremy Cowart at on Instagram at Jeremy Cowart. Um, here, I'll put up a link here real quick, and I'm sure he has lots and lots of stuff on here. So, is there any is there any uh, recent portraits on your Instagram that would would have been this virtual thing? Uh, that's a good question. I'm infamous for basically deleting everything I post on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's all right. That's all right. No, it's weird to really do a delete everything I post. Yeah, if you, yeah. If you scroll down, there's a few around. <laughs> the, uh, Just follow him on Instagram, and you could watch him do this live on Facebook stories or Instagram stories. It's super fun. Two posts. I did twelve hundred photo shoots, and I have two posts from the, from all those photo shoots. Okay. Wow. It's down, yeah. I'm weird, man. I'm really weird with my. With my Instagram, basically, I love something the day I create it. The next day, I kind of like it. Third day, I like it. The fourth day, I'm like over it. Fifth day, I hate it. You know, like it's about a the week. Sixth day, you delete it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. you are such a four, man. Yeah, you know, four, four is four is the individualist, and and they, you know, I, I was actually listening to the first couple minutes of Ian Cron's chapter uh, when I was riding my bike this morning before I got rained on. Um, and, and he was, you know, he was saying that like fours are always, you know, they said they're all, they're, a lot of times they're frequently going from idea to idea to idea. And they also feel like they have this need or this compulsion to not be like everyone else, you know, oh to, fe- to feel like, oh, that's just too common. I can't do that thing. You know, like it's gotta mm-hmm. be this new creative outlet, you know, like, uh, and so the fact that you're like deleting your images, oh, it's too basic or oh, it's too much like someone else's Instagram. It's got to be this uniquely you thing. And I've seen you do that over the course of the last 14, 15 years of knowing you. Um, but uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's just it's so bad. I mean, it sounds cool, but it's it is not a good thing, man. I just I need to I need to learn to like my work, <laughs> you know, like I'm. Mm-hmm. I need to, I need to learn to just leave things on the internet and let them be, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I'm always. I mean, even since high school, like I had to dress differently. I had to do things differently. I've always had to do everything different from everybody else. It's not out of ego, not because I think I'm better than anybody. Um, in fact, I'm quite the opposite. I, you know, I, I I feel we're all truly equal and. Um, but still, that need to still be, even though we're equals, I have to be different. Not better, just different. I can't yeah. dress like anybody else. I can't do what anybody else is doing. Like, it's just a weird, it's a weird thing. Yeah. So, so uh, I think Crystal, is Crystal the only four on our team, Rich? Crystal, I, uh, I believe I so. I don't know if anyone else is a four, but uh, Crystal Livesey, is, uh, she's one of our mentors on our team, and she's... She's always a she's she's a, she's she's a, a true, true she's four. A true she's, she's four. Just, she just she just chimed in and said accurate on here. She's a true yeah. four as well, but like just that that like just, just that feeling of like needing you know to be different or you know also. So the other interesting thing I was reading about because I'm not a four. Um, I'm a seven, happy go lucky. A lot of times fours are happy to focus on um, sadder things or more somber or more. Um, I, I don't know, like thought provoking. Down, I don't you can know, say down. down. Like down. that's that's okay. Like, and I'm like, gosh, let's let's go. Like, I'm I'm that seven. I like, I want to hype it up. You know, like I want to keep it happy. If you start talking about negative things, I'm like, let's um, pretend there's um, no sadness. Um, let's I'm pretend like, there's I'm no like, sadness in life. That's I'm like looking for the exit. If you like talking about sad things, I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't want to talk about deep mm-hmm. stuff like that. It's sad. You know, like makes me like, I, and I will talk about it. But it's just one of those things. Is like as a seven, it's one of the things that I, I try to get away from. Like I, I try not to engage in. Right. Um, and so it's interesting how the fours are are able to live there in that you know some, what sometimes feels too heavy for for a seven to 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 soak in, you know, yeah. and um, you know and there's there's a lot of somberness going on, um, you know, in the world right now with all these different things and 
Um, but what's interesting is you were telling me the other day uh, about a new project that you have coming out that's that's really to address that. Um, so I was wondering if you could, because it, it's funny, because as you, I was like, wow, that's because you said I'm doing this new thing and it's a very somber take on it or something, and I was like, <laughs> that's such the opposite of like a seven. I'm like, right, happy, yeah. let's keep it poppy. Uh, but tell me, tell us about what's coming up next that you're going to be launching here soon. Yeah, uh, I was laughing a minute ago because yeah, this new thing I'm launching it's called Liminal Society. The word liminal means a state of transition, like in between you're at the threshold of something. And it hit me that we're all in a liminal state between pre-COVID and post-COVID life. And, mm. you know, for at least most creatives I know, it is one big fat question mark. Like, mm -hmm. we just don't know what life is going to look like. I've got musician friends that are just screwed. Like, they're screwed. There's no, there's no end in sight to when they'll be able to tour again or when a lot of photographers will be able to really do photo shoots like they used to again um so to me there's two choices there's do i give in to depression anxiety all that or do i work my ass off and keep cranking out personal projects and like explicit keep, rating <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> keep it, uh, there. exactly keep doing my own personal work so that I'm I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm I'm doing work that matters. I'm doing the most important work I've ever done. Um, and, but I realize a lot of photographers don't know how to get there. They don't know how to go there to that place. And I've been doing that all year long. It started with Enneagraph. Then I did a tornado relief project with dancers. Then I did six or 1,200 virtual photo shoots. And then I Crazy. did the Black Lives Matter project. Um, and then after Black Lives Matter, then I went to all the weird, crazy fashion shoots. And then I cranked out a crap ton of paintings and fine artwork. Um, and, you know, so I live in this place of personal work. And most photographers think yeah, you, you get to a point where you live in a cloud where people just call you and pay you money. And my point is like, no, that's not how it works. You, you do your own work, hmm. which then draws the interest of people saying oh i love what you just did can i hire you to do this and so yeah. goal of liminal society is to it's kind of like what you're doing but literally a, a, a more somber like more about the personal work it's not so much education even though there is like i've got all the c university archives as a part of it mm. but it's just more about being a community that is pushing each other to to dive deep into our own um, personal work so that we don't lose our minds, you know, during this time. So we'll see. It'll be a interesting experiment. I'm, I'm excited. But yeah, it's like the branding, the vibe, the, the colors of the website are literally extreme opposite of everything you do. The blue v-neck. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's wearing a black no shirt. No blue v-neck. Uh, yeah. No, but I love it. The liminal society is like is so needed, um, and I and yeah. I can see the fours racing over to it. You know, like it's so great. Mm -hmm. So if you're you're going to be releasing the liminal society in the next week or two, I, I understand, yeah. or, or in the near future. And so yeah, um, that's people can every day working on the website. That's great. So people can't get access to it yet, but if they want to if they want to be the first to find out about it, they should go to jeremycowart.com, sign up for your email list, and then you'll email them. When it's when it's ready for them to check out this amazing new community called the Liminal Society. Yeah, and of course I'll be blasting it on all socials over the coming days as well. So, mm. yeah, I'm excited. Jeremy Cowart, the king of pivoting. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so just JeremyCowart.com is that the is that the correct place to to go for this? Yeah. And then yep. and then there's an um, there's an email uh, sign up spot for that yeah but, i'll be right. i'll be announcing it on twitter and instagram of course so anywhere they follow me or want to want to subscribe that'd be great yeah so i want to encourage you guys to go get act go go sign up for jeremy cowart's email list and uh and find out when the liminal society because it's going to be amazing he was showing me some of the behind the scenes stuff and then c university it just has a had a massive amount of videos and you're going to be adding a lot or all of those videos to it uh what's yeah. what's the yeah so since CU, so CU was a, a vault that we created really about four or five years ago, like over 150 videos, and um, it was a lot of work. I'm really proud of that work. But since then, 
I've just learned so much. My process now is so different um, and is so, so for. I'm convinced that uh, no one else in the world is doing what I'm doing in the studio because it's just years and years of combined ideas. Like what happens if I uh, combine strobes, but uh, every time I shoot a different strobe fires, then what happens if every time a strobe fires, 500 different backdrops project every two seconds and so i can never take the same picture twice and then have a <laughs> you gotta be individual it's, it's so nuts dude <laughs> watching behind the scenes is so fun i'm like holy crap like it's just so trippy i love yeah. it it's 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 such a crazy process that i actually can't take the same picture twice even if my subject like stays dead still um but that's how add i am i'm like i gotta create a system where every picture is different um Anyway, so like I'll be teaching stuff like that with the new videos and showing the the full behind the scenes into my my weird process. So it should mm. be fun. Love that. Well, I'm excited for for our students to be able to go check out that and join the Liminal Society as well once once that drops. Um, so I'm 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 pumped for you. Thank well, you. Jeremy, um, do you have any advice for photographers starting out right now? Before we kind of like do this giveaway in just a second. Any any closing thoughts? I mean, especially during this time where you know everything's a big question mark. Like you just have to, you just have to shoot. You know, put those ten thousand hours in, but not just shoot. Like shoot things you really care about. Like document your loved ones who you may not have for a long time. Like I lost my mom this year. I lost my mm -hmm. brother five years ago. You know, like I took the time to really shoot portraits of my mom over the last year like that was just personal work and i'm so glad i did and mm -hmm. so i think we need to to do better at just documenting like our immediate surroundings and and the people in our lives and i just spent the weekend at a water park with my kids and it's my favorite thing to just take a cool camera and just document their their you know memories and lives and um so yeah just gotta keep shooting well i love that um, but that did that did spur something else real quick because we want to we want to ask what what is the cool camera that you're talking about? <laughs> I'm currently <sighs> with a Canon R5, and uh, I mean this is no BS. It is it's the best camera Canon has ever made by far. I mean it is um, not even all the specs that they're promoting. Like yes, it's 45 megapixels, but Something about just the little things to me feel all new. Like I even had the EOS R that I've been shooting with. And even from the EOS R to the R5, it's like they took a different design approach. Like with the interface, like when you look through the viewfinder, you're like, whoa, like the mm -hmm. interface is different. It's just, uh, it just feels so fresh. And like, uh, I just felt this overwhelming sense of like, wow, Canon finally did it, you know? Yeah, well, I, I'm I'm excited because we've been I'm, missing. We've been missing for years. That's true. That's yeah. true. And I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've I've had the R. Rich shoots with the R primarily, and we're both trying to get our hands on an R5 right now. It's it's proving kind of difficult. But well, we hey, have a couple. We are. A couple we of leads. are. We are. Yeah, but we yeah. are. Let's. We are going to give one away, David. Let's talk. We can. You can hint that. This is true. So, Jeremy, you're saying the best Canon camera, best maybe ever. the best camera ever, right? Um, and, and when new cameras come out, this should be the best camera, but this is like, this yeah. is like just this is ground game changer. Game changer. Yeah. They, they are having overheating issues with video. I have not pushed the camera that hard yet. In fact, I haven't done any video with it, mm -hmm. uh, nor have I done an actual client photo shoot with it. So I can't speak into the overheating yet. Mm -hmm. That could be, that very well could be a major issue. Um, I've only been using it, you know, for personal documenting my family and all that. So I haven't seen any problems, but outside of the potential overheating, I mean, I'm I'm obsessed with it. So a yeah, Canon camera I, that grabs focus. Who would have thought? I know. <laughs> Who would have thought? In, the, in the middle of the night, I did I did test the autofocus on the beach, like pitch black, and it just 
focused right away on my kids. Like I couldn't it's believe. Like the, oh, it's so dumb. It feels weird. Like you, I overshot even my R. Like the R was a pretty big jump focusing. Yeah. And uh, my buddy Ryan Moser went to Iceland and shot a waterfall, slow shutter speed waterfall at night, and it was in focus. It's yeah. just like, what the heck? Yeah. It's amazing. Technology. This is true. The, the, this is one of the things I'm excited about. We're gonna be, you know, this I'm letting the cat out of the bag a little teeny bit, but yeah, Do Rich, it. Rich, you just did it. But we're gonna be giving away an R5, not today on this podcast. We're gonna give away something really cool, a free photo shoot with Jeremy Coward. But uh, we're gonna be giving away an R5 um, in the next few weeks. So make sure you guys tune in or keep keep uh, keep tuning in and finding out more info on that. So I'm really excited about that because this camera is. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be probably selling a bunch of my photography gear and just switching over to the to the Canon R5 and getting the RF lenses and just kind of doing like a re and I haven't done that I mean I still have some of the same lenses that I was shooting weddings with ten years ago eleven years ago um, so anyways I, I'm like excited to do a refresh and the Canon R5 is like this is the time this is the time to do it and so in honor of that we're gonna be giving away. Um, an R5 in the next few weeks, so I'm really excited about that. But you approve? You like the R5? I okay. think it's a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, best camera. Awesome. Um, well, hey, we have um, uh, hope, hopefully... Do we have some winners? Yeah. Um, the, the winner of a signed copy of David's book, or of Jeremy's book, is Rich <laughs> Coleman. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Can you uh, believe it? Can you believe it? Okay. No, I just I slacked I just slacked it to you. Okay. Uh, all right. So that <laughs> th this is really funny. So I'm gonna I'm gonna announce that this is funny because I didn't do this. The team just randomly picked someone who shared, and this is hilarious. So the the winner of the the winner of the book is I'm gonna text this to um to Jeremy as well. So that, Jeremy, you can announce the winner of the free session in a second. Um, uh, all right. So I just texted that to you. Um, but the winner of the free book is David DeVoe. And what's what's hilarious about that is David DeVoe is my brother-in-law. So we didn't pay it. Like, I don't know if my team knows that. They just randomly picked someone. But oh, David that's DeVoe, hilarious. David DeVoe is my brother-in-law, my wife's brother. And he's, he's awesome. David. He was just at my house a couple weeks again. So we love you, David. You're going to get a free book from Jeremy Coward. Uh, uh, well, Amazon, but, you know. By Jeremy Coward. <laughs> um, so that's awesome. And then Jeremy, did you get that text message of the next person? I okay. did. All right. So we're, so the, the winner of the free session, so this is, either, I don't know where this person is, um, but no they, they, if, they're, if they're far away, they can do a virtual session, right? And if they're close by, they could do a 15-minute uh, session in the studio? Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay sweet. The winner is... Tanya, Tanya Mitchell. Tanya Mitchell. Tanya, yep. can you tell us how excited you are? <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, that's awesome. I don't know if it's Tanya or Tanya, but but that's that's great. I'm, I'm but jealous. she won. This is true. She she did win. So Jeremy Cower, Enneagram 4, um, Canon Explorer. You're a Canon Explorer of Light, correct, I think? He just he just froze on us. He just froze. The internet just but went he's, out. He's a, he's 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 there a he four is. on there the Instagram number one in our heart. Uh, <laughs> yes, yep. I am a Canon Explorer of Light. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that, I'm yep. jealous of that. That was really that was really easy to, to become a Canon Explorer of Light, right? Like just 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 yeah. tweet out once. Yeah, just super yeah, just easy. Type an email and I want to be a Canon Explorer of Light, and there you go. They yeah. they just right away like instantly, mm -hmm. right? Yep. No <laughs> cringe. No, no experience, no yeah. Necessary. Yeah, and I remember after you like shooting all these celebrities and doing all these amazing projects for like a decade, and you're like, you're like, I'm just trying to get this connection. Anyways, and you were really excited yeah. when that, whenever that happened a few years ago. Sure. So, sure. Um, but thanks so much for coming on Enneagram Four. Check out JeremyCowart.com. Follow Jeremy, and uh, keep an eye out in the Liminal Society. It's going to be an amazing new uh, community that Jeremy is launching that I think is really needed, especially for you Enneagram Fours out there. So thanks mm -hmm. for thanks for tuning in, Jeremy. Have a have we a fantastic day, you. everyone. Yeah. And guess what? I love you. Both <laughs> of you. <laughs> All right. I love we you. Lo we Thank love you all for having. Really appreciate it. Yeah, man. All right.